What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. With 2.4 and Young Lee's banner right around the corner in about 48 hours or so, I'd say, uh, I figure it's high time we go over her value, where my headspace is with this particular character, the pros and cons of what she's capable of and what she can bring to the table when comparing her to the pre-existing DPS in the game right now, because she is a DPS character. And honestly, I think she's not a must have in any scope of the imagination, provided you already have a couple of DPS on your account. If you're a new player, all of these characters are going to look attractive. But this is a nuanced discussion, right? We can't give you a one size fits all thesis because there's way too many people pulling for many different reasons. Uh, but I think that Yun Li is a character you should pull for. Obviously, if you like her, let's get that one out of the window right now. Obviously, if you like her, but also if you feel you don't have Argenti, right? You don't have a physical DPS that can deal adjacent or AOE damage yet. Or you're like me, you have a, a, a fucking C3 Clara. Is it C? Bro, I'm brain rotted by gotcha. It's E. If you don't have a E3 Clara, but you don't like playing Clara, like Clara for me is just incredibly fucking mid. I, only a Clara main is gonna fight and die on that hill that Clara's more than mid. She's not. But if you're like me, and you don't like your Clara, and you don't have Argenti, this character might be a very strong option for you. Now, is the damage really impressive on the character? Absolutely, she does some really good damage. But here's the thing, damage is easily replicated in this game. 300,000 damage, 400,000 damage, 500,000 damage. You might think that shit is impressive, but now we have people like Firefly who can do that three times before turn ends. And if you're really, you know, if, you're, if your Firefly is really cracked four times, before turn ends, right? Acheron, same thing, do, does just as much damage. The, the There is a nuance to that discussion because Acheron can't deal as much damage as Firefly, but Firefly has a massive weak, weakness, and that is if she can't break shields, she can't do any damage, right? Acheron doesn't have that weakness. Uh, the other thing is we have Imbiber Lune, Jing Liu, characters who aren't as strong, but still get the job done. That can dish out tons of damage 300k 400k they're just not doing it as consistently as the top of the top meta i think yun lee is a t0.5 dps she's definitely not t0 this is not the kind of character you're gonna pick up and they're going to change everything you know it's not that kind of character she's on the level of imbiber lune and jing liu in terms of dps and that's the problem you have pre-existing DPS in the game right now that can do what she does. And in the scenarios where people are weak to physical, if you have a boot hill, he's going to clap them. If you have an Argenti, he can even get the job done. So with this character, it's a matter of I love the counter play style. It's so fun. I just want to play with that counter play style. And I feel you. She has that big ass surter sword from marvel right surter just big old red sword coming down in the form of an excalibur animation i get it that is super awesome that's the other thing with her too though her whole entire playstyle revolves around using her ultimate which means she's pretty much attached in perpetuity to ting yun and scooby-doo which they're running scooby-doo next to her and it's like i only whales and dolphins can't afford to pick up this completely unnecessary combo for the sake of just making it work, right? Like if you can't afford to pick up her, Scooby-Doo and Ting Yun, then your team is not gonna feel truly complete, uh, which is another problem you run into with Yun Lee. But anyways, before we go any further into me yapping about her, I wanna look at this early access footage from one of the creators in the server, and that way we can have a good like visual representation with regards to her performance, what she does and the team she's using. I think Pokey had the team that I would use in mind myself with what we have available to us. Uh, after that, I'll tell you why I think she's just a skip for the majority of people, but for what it's worth, I'm picking her up, but the only reason I'm picking her up is because I heard she's related to Blade and I'm a Blade fanatic, plus I am a, I am a simp for counter play styles. I've told y'all this, I love a counter play style. I don't like this character's uh, design. It's just not for me. I think her design is like, I feel like the quality of her design is under what the usual in-game model designs look like. Like you look at a Kafka, a Black Swan or any of them, take away the attractiveness. They just look more refined and polished. When I look at Young Lee, she doesn't look polished. I don't know what it is, bro. It's wild, it's weird. Now I get it. Some of these Honkai Star Rail cucks are not capable of hearing that scrutiny without thinking I'm trying to shit on her. Just the truth, she doesn't look that good, bro. Like her model, her actual drip marketing model looks way better than the in-game model. 
but I digress. Let's look at this early access footage and then we'll close off with what I think you should do with regards to her, depending on your account. Uh, this is Mr. Pokey's video, by the way. If you haven't heard of him already, he's a fantastic content creator in the gotcha space. Uh, feel free to subscribe to him if you end up enjoying it. We're not watching this whole video. One, bro yaps way too much. Uh, two, in the beginning here, he sounds like somebody like murdered his dog or stole his lunch money, which is insane. But now nah, all jokes aside, I just want to see the showcase here, right? You guys can feel free to check out Eidolon analysis, relics, signature light cone, character kit. You can check out all of that. I just want to look at the team comp showcase he had here, which is pretty fantastic and good representation of what she can do. And then we have to use the intro because I don't want to do a disservice to Hoyoverse. I want them to at least explain that this is not, you know, the disclaimer pretty much. Let's look at it. Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video, and on today's episode of it says review. No, 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 no. Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. Look how bro is so bro is a sad little puppy. He looks like Tectone disowned him as his son. He looks like Hoyoverse is still bullying him around the scene, uh, behind the scenes from releasing that early accent, <laughs> bro. Could you act a little bit more excited about getting early access to Young Leap Buggy? What's going on here, bro, huh? Hey there, guys. Mr. Pookie here. Back with another video. Gacha Smack killed my dog. And on today's episode of Early Access Review, we are going to be taking a look at Yung Lee in the Creator Experience Program. Creator Experience Program, they are not in indicative of the final result so might expect some changes in there i would say that i am pretty pleasantly surprised with okay so he got that disclaimer out the way experience program they're not in ah uh, one, one, one more here we go i just wanted to show y'all this is the build right here he has 3500 attack 87 over 144 and 101 speed in her trace kit she doesn't have anything that boosts her crit damage it's just crit rate boost in her trace kit and it's not a lot either uh so and then there's no speed boot here as well obviously and I, I i think i agree with that build option she's just not the type of person you really care about going twice with especially if you're throwing uh somebody like um robin on the team you kind of want to like put as much attack on her as possible so that she can get that massive counter attack off she quite literally is a meliotis full counter character all right so that's her build let's come over here to the team comp uh section where he shows this off and then we'll finish off with apocalyptic shadows as well because he shows the uh the apocalyptic shadow showcase too which is nice and he gives some pretty good talking points truly the greatest content creator in our community Quick load, team. At, at, at speaking uh, uh in tongues that nobody understands team comms, from what i've tried with Yingli, <laughs> i felt that the overall team comes with Yingli that have the best experience with so far with a such thing is going to be Yingli, Ying Yun, robin and Huo Huo. And I, uh, by the way, I completely agree. I don't think there's a better, well-rounded team composition with a sustainer. You got two of the of the only batteries in the game uh, that can battery her. She has a energy meter similar to uh, our. It's literally like Argenti's meter, except she doesn't have two different ultimates. She only has one ultimate. But using those two ultimates is everything. You got to time them so that she could land the counter and do full damage right when she gets hit. So she has 240 energy in, to in total, but she can use her ultimate with 120 energy cost, if that makes sense. So you can spam her ult twice, which you want to do when timed correctly. And you'll see here in the showcase. I'm going to be using this team to kind of feature all of my memory of chaos runs later <clears> on. <throat> uh, the reason why this comp works so well is number one, Huo Huo has 20% max energy, it buffs Yun Li based on 240 energy, which gives her a much higher buff than normal. Then Team Yun, you know, as usual, 60 energy is going to yeah, because uh, Scooby Doo's uh, energy is, or the ult for her is, it's percent based, right? So if she gives twenty percent of your energy back to you, and you have two hundred and fucking forty energy, which is insane, that's a much bigger number uh, given back. But the problem here is, who owns Scooby Doo apart from me and a number of individuals who picked her up because we were content creators and we were, could afford to pick up all the sustains in the game? A lot of people don't own Scooby Doo, and a lot of people aren't going to pick her up right now because they're probably waiting on people like Face Xiao or that new healer or whoever the hell, or they're trying to just pick up a copy of Young Lee. This is the problem that's that's that you're dealing with right now as probably a low budget player. 
going to be very, very good for Yuni. And the overall fundamental mechanics for Yuni is to generate as much Intuit cows as possible, which is going to be from getting as much energy as possible, right? So units like Hall and Team is going to be excellent, excellent for Yuni. Then Robin is just overall... I would agree because, like, if you do not ult with Yun Li, her damage is trash. That's just, that's just go ahead and lay that out there. As a DPS, if you're not using that ult, her damage is trash, which is why she has to have a Ting Gun and a Scooby Doo. She doesn't have to have the Scooby Doo, I'll be honest. You can put some other, some, some other sustainers on the team, but it's just way more effective uh, with Scooby Doo on the team because Scooby Doo is not just buffing her, she's buffing the Ting Yun so that Ting Yun can ult more, and she's buffing the fucking Robin. Or if you're using somebody else like a, uh, what's her name? Damn. Sparkle, there we go. I feel that Robin just gave me a, a little bit more benefits compared to Bronya. Uh, extra turn units such as Bronya, Sparkle, Robin, they can all work really well with Yingli, but I felt that Robin was kind of uh, the best slot here because the extra turn does benefit both Huo Huo and Ting Yun as well, right? So it yep. allows us to generate and rotate our rotations uh, faster, quicker, generate more energy, and just overall help us ramp up Yingli's own ultimate much faster instead of compared to Bronya and Sparkle, which only buffs a single unit. So overall, that is going to be the best slot team comes for. Okay, so this was, this is very important because I want to watch, I want y'all to see this right here. In fact, let me scroll over here. Uh, this is a very, this is honestly pretty much the only footage you need to look at. So he's about to use her regular skill, right? He chooses to break the one on the right because you don't want to break people and prevent them from attacking you. That's the thing about her. You, you need to be attacked so that she can full counter back. And that's the weakness as well as her strength. So he breaks Buddy's shield over here since he's already about to die so that this girl can still go. Now, what I liked about this sequence here is it showed me majority of bosses first of all as you as you guys already know they go twice they attack two times yeah over here in the cycle both of these guys will go two times if you're going up against bosses that will attack twice dude young lee's a monster against those because she can counter twice right you you let them hit you boom you attack you ult and then you full counter, and then they hit you again, and then you ult. So you can time to uh, two different ultimates to ensure that you get two full-blown Meliodas full counters. It's crazy, but you'll see right here. So this is a regular skill, right? You need that I found myself, right? Uh, for the I hate that fucking animation. God, I hate it. Who chunks a great sword like that, bro? So her ult's up, right? Offers like Pelos, the wolf. Boom. So she attacks. Let me go ahead and mute Poke. Pokey, shut up, bro. Like, bro, you are yapping in my ear. <laughs> Genuinely, respectfully, all love. Anyways, right here, first counter, boom, right? So she countered back with a regular counter, mind you, which is ass. And then popped ult because this character only went once. They're still going to go a second time. So now he pops ult, taunts the character to guarantee the attack is going to hit her again. Boom, right? And now here's the full counter, the ultimate. Bam! Like, dude, that, that is absolutely ridiculous. I'll be honest. Like, that shit must feel so satisfying. I look forward to hearing the SFX uh, when I pick up this character. But that's what I mean. That's pretty much what you want to pick her up for. Is this damage impressive? Yes, it is. But Boot Hill can do that shit three times before a cycle ends. You see what I'm trying to say? Uh, and Boot Hill, in this exact same scenario, will decimate both of those enemies, as well as a Firefly, will decimate both of those enemies. So that's why I was trying to tell you, like, her damage is very nice, but it's replaceable. Easily replaceable. But it is impressive. And the last lot, having the additional turn helps us generate energy much faster. So if you're not running units like Bronya, Sparkle, or Robin, and if you want to use debuffers, although they apply debuffs to the enemy and allow us to deal more damage, I found that getting more turns on Team Green generally... So he spammed his ult right here? translates to a right before Argenti's turn output overall right so so that he can get the full counter here's the full counter are gonna be boom 310k damage very nice what team recommendations for you and now if they're out of the way let's move on all right so now we can go to apocalyptic shadow so you guys can see the problem with her in apocalyptic shadow the, the problem essentially is when she breaks somebody's shield in apocalyptic shadow everyone gets their energy back and their ults filled up but the guy can't attack because she broke their shield, their daze. So she pops her ult, but what the fuck is she going to do with it? She can't get attacked. You see what I mean? So that's a, a massive negative, and that is the L that I pointed out way back when, when, I, when they revealed her kit. 
she relies on being hit. And in a number of scenarios in the game, that can be an absolute negative. Functions in this and new end game mode for Mihoyo, right? Uh, I would say that Yun Li's overall performance in Bogdiv Shadows, uh, it leaves a little bit more to be desired because this mode by itself, it does hinge on weakness breaking the end. So, let me translate that for you. Pokey in the creator server is incapable of really saying what he wants to say. If he was not in the creator server, he'd be like, <laughs> okay, neutrally speaking, uh, Yun Li's damage is absolute fucking dog shit in Apocalyptic Shadow. Do not use her in that mode, only MOC, maybe pure fiction. Enemy. And since enemies that are winners broken, they can't hit you. So even though we do have the additional trace to basically guarantee the Bro, what, what the fuck was that? Can't hit you. So even though we do have the additional trace to basically <laughs> What the fuck was that? Basically guarantee the like soft pity of the into a cow. Uh, the damage output is still definitely a lot lower as we would like it to be, right? Because the enemies that we're doing were broken, they we He's trying so hard. He's trying so hard not to shit on his character right now in Apocalyptic Shadow. Can't trigger our talent which generates our energy to have a high ultimate attack. So overall, the damage output from Yuin Li in the Apocalypse Shadows, it is going to be a little bit lower than expected. Right? <laughs> a little bit lower? Little bro, that's a lot of bit lower. So that's going to be that. Uh, this should give us the final clear right here, pop, popping this off. Yuin Li is going to go ahead, pass this big into a cow, breaking <laughs> the target with this skill over here, refund the energy, Full energy ultimate, but we pretty much already got it. So it is going to be a rough. All right. So like, yeah, th those are pretty much the showcases I wanted to uh, wanted you guys to take a look at. Uh, great video, Pokey. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The character is strong, though. Right. If you pick this character up, rest assured, they're going to perform. There's no doubt about it. But they're an easy skip because they're not doing anything that other characters can't do. At the end of the day, DPS is DPS. Regard, you know, regardless of whether she's countering and making that turn into damage, it's still damage at the end of the day. So this is one of those characters where I feel if you pick them up, you're picking them up because you just love the full counter play style or you're a big fan of the character themselves. But with other characters coming around the corner, like Sparkle and the male Yai Miko, which is, I think his name is Jiao Xiao. I already forgot, forgot how to pronounce that. Those two characters are much more valuable. I already see... The, the toxic part of the Hoyo community shitting on Zhao Show before he even come out. Th this is a very normal thing that they love to do. Before characters come out, they completely shit on them. There is a very important thing about the male Yai Miko's kit that a lot of people don't know about because they don't look at the freaking multipliers and they don't understand how important each multiplier is. There's, um, you know what? We'll save that for another video. We'll save it for another video. We'll give our full analysis on him. But him and Sparkle are much more valuable than Yun Li. Surprise, surprise, the supportive characters will always have a much more significant emphasis on their value than some than just another DPS unit. Overall, I'm picking this character up because it's content for me. And more content is more 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 money in my pocket. Keep it a buck with you. But we'll pick her up. We'll show how she performs. I'm also going to show you guys how Jade has a very important factor as well to her kit. Uh, it'll be well before her banner goes by. So if you skip her, eh, it's OK. It's not that big of a deal. I do think she has insane fucking value for pure fiction alone, but she also has value for MOC. Uh, if you skip her, who cares? She'll come back around another time uh, in the future and you can just you'll have that information available at that time. Thanks for watching. Peace, love and happiness. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side.